discussing about model selection and cross validation. In our previous videos, we have seen various regression and classification problem. Some of the regression problem that we had discussed was simple linear regression, polynomial linear regression. Similarly, we had also discussed multiple classification problems like logistic regression, decision tree, random forest regression. If you have not seen that videos, you can watch it through my playlist. But make sure that you watch some of the classification videos before applying model selection and the ways that you can select different kind of models or the algorithm. This selection will be based on the accuracy level and we will be trying to find out that which is the best machine learning algorithm that we can apply for a particular data set problem. Then we'll also be seeing about cross validation, which is a library which will be changing your training and test set data set in various different ways. Before going ahead guys, please do subscribe the channel because every week I try to make some 2-3 to three videos, some on machine learning and some on deep learning. So let us start. Before starting, I want to give you a small brief about the data set that I am going to use. So this is the data set that I am using which is nothing but purchased underscore data set. In this particular data set, there are different kind of columns like user ID, gender, age, estimated salary and purchase. And based on the age and estimated salary, we are going to predict whether the person is purchasing or not. So this is also a different kind of classification problems. What we'll do is that we'll try to use two different kind of classification problem. And then we are going to use cross validation to determine which classification problem is the best for this particular machine learning technique and this particular data set. So you can see over here, we have different features like age, estimated salary and purchase. I can also take gender as my independent feature, but I don't want to include the third variable right now. If you want to include it, make sure that you convert this male and female into category variables like zero and one. Don't worry about this particular data set. I will be uploading it in my GitHub link and providing the description in the particular description of my YouTube video. So let me just go ahead and start coding and use this particular data set to solve the classification problem. So to begin with, I'm going to import two libraries that is called as NumPy and Pandas. I'm going to use read underscore CSV to read this CSV file. Then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to execute the age and estimated salary column and I'm going to import it in my independent feature that is X. Similarly, my purchase column will be in the dependent feature that is Y. This X and Y will later be split into train and test. And then we are going to train our model based on the train data and the model I'll be applying to find out the accuracy from the test data. So here it is. I'm going to import the train test split from model selection. Next, I'm going to import the K neighbors classifier. This is the algorithm that I'm using for classification problem right now. After that, I'm also going to use metrics. Let me just give a small brief about K neighbors classifier. K neighbors classifier is nothing but the K nearest neighbor, which it uses uh, a concept called as Euclidean distance in the back end. Euclidean distance helps you to find the distance between two dimension points. Basically, there is a math formula to this, which can be said as root of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1 whole square. Sorry, it is also x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square if you are trying to find the distance between two dimension points. Similarly, with respect to three dimension, the formula changes. So in the next step, I'm going to divide my data set into train and test. I'm using this train and test split library. In that, I'm giving X and Y and the random state as five. Please make a note of this random state value because I'm going to explain about this and how it is actually helping. It will be helping us to do the model selection. So then I'm going to call my K neighbors, K neighbors classifier. I'm going to create an object and in that I'm going to consider k n underscore neighbor is equal to 4. Instead of 4, I would like to give an odd number because if I get two nearest neighbor of the same type, at that time it will be very difficult for the model to predict on which side it has to go. After that, I'm going to use kn k classifier dot fit and I'm going to give the x n train and y train. After that, I'm going to predict it and this will be my predicted value. After that, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to find out the accuracy score based on the test data and I'll be comparing with my Y predicted data. So let me just execute both of this particular line. 
here it is i'm getting around 75 percent of accuracy by k n underscore neighbor is equal to five now remember that what i told about random state random underscore state now i'm going to copy this code same code and i'm going to paste it over here remember this i have made k n underscore neighbor as five let me change the random state values to three and let us see what will be the accuracy you can see the accuracy that i am getting is basically 81 percent similarly let's change it from one in one random state when we are selecting we are getting an accuracy for 74 percent similarly for two let's see whether the accuracy will change or not so it is going to change to 78 percent now let me just play with some more like random state is equal to seven now you can see that the value is 0.77 that is 77 percent of accuracy make sure that whenever we are selecting this particular random state the x train and the y train that are selected from the data set that is x and y it is selected in a random way we are just trying to replicate those data and select the x train data and the y train data together and each and every time we change this random state value we will be getting a different x train and x y sorry x test so in order to see that particular data let's see how your x train and x test looks like okay so first of all let me just execute this so you can see that currently my random state is 5 now let me just display the x train value here once i execute the x train value you can see that there are so many values so let me just write dot head so that it will just display me the top five rows so here it is these are my top five rows see the indexes from this database data set different indexes are selected and they are combined into train data set now what i'm going to do this will be observing the first row over here suppose the first row here is age as 46 estimated salary as 27 27 23000 23000 then what we are going to do is that we are going to copy the same code and paste it over here i'm going to change the random state to 7 okay so let me just execute it and what i'm going to do is that i'm going to see the x value now again i'll use x dot head to just see the top five rows now let us see what was the first value in the upper x train and what is my lower sorry i had written x over here instead make it as x train so here it is x train now observe the first value age is 44 over here and we have 139000 estimated salary similarly if i go first up uh, my first row is basically age is 46 and my estimated salary is 23000 so what i'm going to do is that the conclusion that comes out from this is that if we change the random state in the back end, there is a different random selection of the X train and the Y X test data. Similarly, in this case, we are selecting random state as seven. The X train and Y train data also gets selected in a random way. So you can see that as we use different different random state, there is a chance of changes in the accuracy score. Right? Sometimes it is coming as eighty. Sometimes it is coming as seventy. So let this use this concept in the form of cross validation. Now, before applying cross validation, we will be seeing what is it, what it is. So here's a small diagram of cross validation. Cross validation is a technique which involves reserving a particular sample of data set on which you do not train the model, right? Later, you test the model on this sample before finalizing the model. So let us see the steps that are involved in the cross validation. Guys, observe this particular diagram. It is very, very, very important. Now, suppose you have this 25 set of data. So I have 25 rows of data and I'm treating as one block as five data, the other block as another five data, then 15, 20, 25. First of all, you reserve a small sample data set. So suppose I reserve the first sample data set and this particular data set will be used like my testing set. Okay, the remaining data will be basically used by like my training set. So this will be my first experiment. That is basically my first uh, loop. Then in the second experiment, what I'm going to do is that my, I'm going to second set, I'm going to select the second block as my test data and the remaining block as my training data. Similarly, in the case of experiment three, I'm going to select the third block as my training data, sorry, as my uh, test data and remaining all data as my training data. Similarly, in the case of experiment four and experiment five, this way you can see that we are having a different kind of test and training data. And because of this, 
what will happen the model will be able to understand different different kind of data set with respect to both training and test data so because of this we may get a better accuracy and the model will be able to deliver a very good results and i hope the accuracy will also be increasing now let us see how we can implement this cross validation in python by using sklearn so to implement the cross validation i'm going to import a library from sklearn.crossvalidation a library named as crossval score again in the first case i'm going to use the k nearest neighbor classifier and the n neighbor is basically 4 now what we are going to do is that if you want to implement this particular technique we will be calling this cross val score in that cross val score the first parameter is basically this is the print method what i'll show let me show you the parameters that are involved in this cross val score okay so if you see the first parameter in cross val score by pressing shift tab let me just execute this once here it is so we are getting a warning it says model selection okay let's use model selection instead of cross validation so model selection and let's press shift tab now you can see that the first parameter is basically the estimator the estimator basically specifies that which machine learning algorithm we are going to apply so it is nothing but k and n classifier the second and third parameter are basically we are providing the s test x data and the y data which is nothing but the independent and the dependent variables the third parameter is something called as cv cv basically means that cross validation now what is the value that you need to specify in cv okay suppose if i take this example okay if i have 25 rows of data and if i complete like five different experiments or five k folds this is also called as k folds okay once i do this five k folds in this case the cv value actually will be five so this completely depends on the type of folds that you want to do with respect to the data okay now suppose if i have 25 data and if you want to do five folds that basically means that that 25 data will be divided by five and in that case your test data will be actually five and the remaining data will be your training so let us do one thing and let us just select the value as cv is equal to 10 okay once i select the cv is equal to 10 and my scoring is basically accuracy what it will do is that the knn classifier will directly compute the scoring for accuracy level for us and then we are going to apply the mean of all the different kind of scores that we will be getting so before executing dot mean let us see 10 different experiments gives us what all kind of results so i'm going to print this and let's see the value now you can see that since i have given cv is equal to 10 for the first experiment i am getting 73 percent of accuracy for the second experiment i see that i am getting 90 percent of the accuracy for the third experiment 85 92 77 67 80 79 74 and 69 so what we can do is that now all these accuracy mean can be taken and finally we'll be able to get the final accuracy Oh, it says an invalid syntax because I did not write dot. So once you do the mean, you will be able to get a very good accuracy of 78%. Now, please note that this is with different type of training and test data set. Okay, now we have actually used k-nearest neighbor. Can I apply different kind of algorithms or classification algorithms? For an example, if I take logistic regression and I apply the same process, instead the estimator is getting changed to log rec which is the object that i have created here again the same thing i have selected cv is equal to 10 i am going to see the squaring is equal to accuracy and i am going to do it as dot mean now let us see the accuracy that we are getting we are getting 64 percent so this basically means that the cross val score since the data is completely different now the training and test data set is differing based on the experiments that we are doing Suppose if I'm giving CV is equal to 10, that basically means that 10 different experiments we are doing and for each and every time the training and test data set is actually changing a bit. At least the test data is completely changing. And with that, we are trying to get different, different kind of accuracy. Okay. Now from this too, if you are thinking that which model should I apply for this particular data set problem, it is very, very clear that you need to apply K nearest neighbor classifier. You cannot apply logistic regression because that logistic regression is also working on different kind of data. K nearest neighbor is also working on different kind of data. 
from this particular data set by the help of cross val score okay so it is always clear that you will be using the k nearest neighbors classifier again you can also try with different classification algorithm like decision trees and xg boost and you can actually predict that which model will actually be very good for this particular data set problem you can do this and you can actually select which is the best model so this was the video regarding model selection and cross validation i hope you liked the video please do subscribe the channel like share comment and please do let me know like if you need any other videos apart from that till then see you bye